trollop stained with wine, clawing at the breasts of adolescence, nuzzling, tearing, shrieking, beating. God, why were we fashioned so? <laughs> <laughs> the poor girl's potty. Oh, I, I wish she hadn't sent me the beastly book. Oh, I must say something nice about it. The binding's very dashing. She used to be such fun before she married that gloomy little man. She was always a fierce poseur's. It's so silly of people to try and cultivate the artistic temperament. Oh, Fawn, she's just a normal, bouncing Englishwoman. You didn't shave this morning. I know I didn't, but I'm going to in a minute. I sometimes wish we were more normal and bouncing, Simon. Why? Well, I should like to be a fresh, open-air girl with a passion for games. Thank God you're not. Oh, it will be so soothing. Not in this house. Where's Mother? In the garden, practising. Practising? She's learning the names of the flowers by heart. What's she up to? I don't know. I always distrust her when she becomes the squire's lady. So do I. She's been at it hard all day. She tapped the barometer this morning. She's probably got a plan about impressing somebody. I wonder who. Some dreary, infatuated young man will appear soon, I expect. Not today. You don't think she's asked anyone down today, do you? I don't know. Has father noticed anything? Oh, no, he's too immersed in work. Perhaps Clara will know. Yell for her. Clara! Clara? Oh, Simon, I do hope she hasn't asked anyone down today. Why? Have you? Yes. Why on earth didn't you tell me? I didn't think you'd care one way or another. Who is it? Richard Gratham. How exciting. I've never heard of him. I shouldn't flaunt your ignorance if I were you. It makes you look silly. Everybody's heard of Richard Gratham. How lovely for them. He's a frightfully well-known diplomatist. I met him at the Mannerings dance. He'll need all his diplomacy here. I warned him not to expect good manners. Oh, but I hope you will be as pleasant to him as you can. I've never met any diplomatists, Sorrel. But as a class, I'm extremely prejudiced against them. They're so suave and polished and debonair. You could be a little more polished without losing caste. Will he have the papers with him? What papers? Oh, any papers. I shall keep him out of your way as much as possible. Do, darling. Yes, what is it? Oh, Clara, has Mother asked anyone down this weekend? I don't know, dear. There isn't much food in the house, and Amy's got toothache. Well, I've got some oil of clothes somewhere. She tried that, but it only burnt her tongue. The poor girl's been writhing about in the scullery like one o'clock. You haven't forgotten to put those flowers in the Japanese room? The Japanese room is essentially feminine and entirely unsuited to the pet of the foreign office. Shut up, Simon. The room looks lovely, dear. You needn't worry. Just like your mother's dressing room on her first night. How oh, restful. Have you told her about your boyfriend? Not boyfriend, Clara. Oh, well, whatever he is. I think Sorrel's beginning to be ashamed of us all, Clara. I don't altogether blame her. We are very slapdash. You're going to leave that picture in the guest's bathroom, Mr Simon, dear. I don't know if it's quite the thing, lots of pink naked women roaring about in a field. Nudity can be very beautiful, Clara. Oh, can it? Perhaps being a dresser for so long has spoilt me eye for it. Clara's looking tired. We ought to have more servants and not depend on her so much. You know we can never keep them. Oh, you're right about us being slapdash, Simon. I wish we weren't. Does it matter? It must, I think, to other people. It's not our fault. It's the way we've been brought up. Well, if we're clever enough to realise that, we ought to be clever enough to change ourselves. I'm not sure that I want to. We're so awfully bad-mannered. Not to people we like. The people we like put up with it because they like us. What do you mean exactly by bad manners? Lack of social tricks and small talk. We never attempt to look after people when they come here. Why should we? It's loathsome being looked after. Oh, yes, but people like little attentions. We've never once asked anyone if they've slept well. I consider that an impertinence, anyhow. I'm going to try and improve. You're only going on like this because you've got a mania for a diplomatist. Oh, hello, Mother. Been gardening? Yes, dear. You look awfully dirty, Simon. What have you been doing? Not washing very much. You should, darling, really. It's so bad for your skin to leave things about on it. Clara says Amy's got toothache. Good dear. There's some oil of cloves in my medicine cupboard. Who is Amy? The scullery maid, I think. How extraordinary. She doesn't look Amy at all, does she? Much more flossy. 
Delphiniums? Are those stubby red flowers, aren't they? No, darling. They're tall and blue. Oh, yes, of course. The red ones are somebody's name. Asters, that's it. I knew it was something opulent. <sighs> I do hope Clara has remembered about the Japanese room. Japanese room? Yes. I told her to put some flowers in it and take Simon's flannels out of the wardrobe drawer. So did I. Why? I've asked Richard Gretham down for the weekend. I didn't think you'd mind. Mind? How dare you do such a thing? He's a diplomatist. That makes it much worse. We must wire and put him off at once. It's too late. Well, we'll tell Clara to say we've all been called away. Oh, that would be extremely rude. And anyhow, I want to see him. You mean to sit there in cold blood and tell me you've asked a complete stranger down for the weekend and that you want to see him? I've often done it before. I fail to see how that helps matters. Where's he going to sleep? The Japanese room. Oh, no, he isn't. Sandy Tyrrell is sleeping there. There, now. What did I tell you? Sandy what? Tyrrell, dear. Why didn't you tell us, Mother? I did. I've talked of nothing but Sandy Tyrrell for days. I adore Sandy Tyrrell. You've never mentioned him. Who is he, Mother? He's a perfect darling and madly in love with me. At least, it isn't me really. It's my celebrated actress, Glamour. But it gives me a divinely cosy feeling. I met him at Nora Trent's. Mother, I wish you'd give up this sort of thing. What exactly do you mean by this sort of thing, Sorrel? Well, you know perfectly well what I mean. Are you attempting to criticise me? I should have thought you'd be above encouraging silly, callow young men who are infatuated by your name. That may be true, but I shall allow nobody but myself to say it. I hope you grow up a good daughter to me, not a critical aunt. Oh, it's so terribly cheap. Cheap? Nonsense. How about your diplomatist? Surely that's a little different, dear. If you mean that because you happen to be a vigorous ingenue of 19, you have the complete monopoly of any amorous adventures there may be about, I feel it my firm duty to disillusion you. But, Mother... Anyone would think I was 80, the way you go on. It was a great mistake not sending you to boarding schools, and you coming back and me being your elder sister. It wouldn't have been any use, darling. Everyone knows where your son and daughter. Only because I was stupid enough to dandle you about in front of cameras when you were little. I knew I should regret it. I don't see any point in trying to be younger than you are. At your age, dear, it would be indecent if you did. But, Mother, darling, don't you see it's awfully undignified for you to go flaunting about with young men? I don't flaunt about. I never have. I've been morally an extremely nice woman all my life, more or less. And if dabbling gives me pleasure, I don't see why I shouldn't dabble. But it oughtn't to give you pleasure any more. You know, Sorrel, you grow more damnably feminine every day. I wish I'd brought you up differently. Well, I'm proud of being feminine. You're a darling. And I adore you. <laughs> and you're very pretty, and I'm madly jealous of you. Are you really? Oh, how lovely. You'll be nice to Sandy, won't you? Can't he sleep in little hell? I guess he's frankly athletic, and all those hot water pipes will sap his vitality. They'll sap Richard's vitality, too. He won't notice them. He's probably used to scorching tropical embassies with punkers waving and everything. He's sure to be deadly, anyhow. You're getting far too blasé and exclusive, Simon. Nothing of the sort, only I loathe being hearty with your men oh, friends. You've never been even civil to any of my friends, men or women. Don't bicker. Anyhow, the Japanese room's a woman's room, and a woman ought to have it. I I promised it to Sandy. He loves anything Japanese. So does Myra. Myra? Myra Arundel. I've asked her down. You've what? I've asked Myra down for the weekend. She's awfully amused. Well, all I can say, it's beastly of you. You might have warned me. What on earth will Richard say? Something exquisitely non-committal, I expect. This is too much. Do you mean to tell me, Simon? Yes, Mother, I do. I've asked Myra down and I have a perfect right to. You've always brought us up to be free about things. Myra Arundel is straining freedom to its utmost limits. Don't you like her? No, dear, I detest her. She's far too old for you. And she goes about using sex as a sort of shrimping net. Really, Mother? It's no use being cross. You know perfectly well I dislike her. And that's why you never told me she was coming until too late to stop her. It's intolerable of you. Whether she's here or not is a matter of extreme indifference to me. But I'm afraid Richard won't like her very much. You're afraid he'll like her too much. That was an offensive remark, Simon, and rather silly. Why on earth don't you fall in love with nice young girls instead of self-conscious vampires? She's not a vampire, and I never said I was in love with her. Oh, he's crazy about her. She butters him up and admires his sketches. What about you picking up old gentlemen at dances? He's not old. You both upset me thoroughly. I wanted a nice restful weekend with moments of Sandy's ingenuous affection to warm the cockles of my heart when I felt in the mood. And now the house is going to be full of discord. 
Not enough food. Everyone fighting for the bath. Perfect agony. I wish I were dead. You needn't worry about Myra and me. We shall keep out of everyone's way. I shall take Richard on the river all day tomorrow. In what? The punt. I absolutely forbid you to go near the punt. It's sure to rain, anyhow. What your father will say, I tremble to think. He needs complete quiet to finish off the sinful woman. I see no reason for there to be any noise unless Sandy whats his name is given to shouting. Before you to Sandy, I shall be extremely angry. No, Why you should be nice What's to me. What's going on? Why are you all making such oh, a noise? I think I'm going mad. Why hasn't Clara brought me my tea? I don't know. Where is Clara? Do you stop firing questions at me, David. Why are you all so irritable? What's happened? Here's your tea. I'm sorry I'm late with it, but Amy forgot to put the kettle on. She's got terrible toothache. Oh, poor girl. Give her some oil of cloves. If anyone else mentions oil of cloves, I shall do something desperate. It's wonderful stuff. Where's Zoe? She was in the garden this morning. I suppose no one thought of giving her any lunch. I put it down by the kitchen table as usual, but she never came in for it. She's probably mousing. She isn't old enough yet. She might have fallen into the river for all you care. I think it's a shame. Oh, don't worry your head. Zoe won't come to any harm. She's too wily. I don't want to be disturbed. Uh, listen, Simon. There's a perfectly sweet flapper coming down by the fourth earth. Will you go and meet her and be nice to her? She's an abject fool, but a useful type. And I want to study her a little in domestic surroundings. She can sleep in the Japanese room. I should like someone to play something very beautiful to me on the piano. Damn everything. Damn, damn, damn. Swearing doesn't help. It helps me a lot. In view of the imminent reception, you'd better go and share, Simon. Oh, it's perfectly beastly. Whenever I make any sort of plan about anything, it's always done in by someone. Oh, I wish I were earning my own living somewhere, a free agent. Able to do whatever I like without being cluttered up and frustrated by the family. It grieves me to hear you say that, Sorrel. Don't be infuriating, Mother. A sad change has come over my children of late. I have tried to shut my eyes to it, but in vain. At my time of life, one must face bitter facts. This is going to be the blackest Saturday till Monday we've ever spent. Oh, Sorrel, you mustn't cry. Oh, don't sympathise with me. It's only temper. Put your head on my shoulder, dear. Your head like the golden fleece. Oh, Richard will have to have little hell and that horrible flap of the Japanese room. Over my dead body. Mother, what are we to do? We must all be very, very kind to everyone. Now then, Mother, none of that. I don't know what you mean, Simon. You were being beautiful and sad. But I am beautiful and sad. You're not particularly beautiful, darling, and you never were. Never mind. I made thousands think I was. And as for being sad... Now, Simon, I will not be dictated to like this. If I say I'm sad, I am sad. You don't understand, because you're precocious and tiresome. There comes a time in all women's oh, lives... Oh, dear. What did you say, Sorrel? I said, oh, dear. Oh, please, don't say it again, because it annoys me. <laughs> you're such a lovely hypocrite. I don't know what I've done to be cursed with such ungrateful children. It's very cruel at my time of life. There you go again. You're getting far too tall, Sorrel. Sorry, Mother. I'm going to forget entirely about all these dreadful people arriving. My mind, henceforward, shall be a blank on the subject. It's all very fine, Mother. I made a great decision this morning. What kind of decision? It's a secret. Aren't you going to tell us? Of course, I made it was a secret from your father. What is it? I am going back to the stage. I knew it! I'm stagnating here. I won't stagnate as long as there's breath left in my body. Do you think it's wise? You retired so very finally last year. What excuse will you give for returning so soon? My public, dear. Letters from my public. Have you had any? One or two. That's what decided me, really. I ought to have had hundreds. We'll write some lovely ones and you can publish them in the papers. Of course. You will be dignified about it all, won't you, darling? I'm much more dignified on the stage than in the country. It's my milieu. I've tried terribly hard to be landed gentry, but without any real success. I long for excitement and glamour. Think of the thrill of a first night. All those ardent playgoers willing one to succeed. The critics all leaning forward with glowing faces, receptive and exultant, emitting queer little inarticulate noises as some witty line tickles their fancy. The satisfied grunt of the Daily Mail, the abandoned gurgle of the Sunday Times, and the shrill, enthusiastic scream of the Daily Express. I can distinguish them all. Have you got a play? I think I shall revive Love's Whirlwind. <laughs> <laughs> Father will be furious. I can't help that. It's such a 
fearful plan. It's a marvellous part. <laughs> oh, you can't. You mustn't say too much against it, Sol. I'm willing to laugh at it a little myself, but after all, it was one of my greatest successes. Oh, it's appalling, but I love it. It makes me laugh. The public love it too, and it doesn't make them laugh much. You are a fool, a blind, pitiable fool. You think because you have bought my body, you have bought my soul. You must say that's dramatic. I've dreamed of love like this, but I never realised, I never knew how beautiful it could be in reality. Oh, that line always brought a tear to my eye. The second act is the best, there's no doubt about that. From the moment Victor comes in, it's strong, tremendously strong. Oh, be Victor, Sol. Do you mean when he comes in at the end of the act? Yes, you know, is this a game? Oh, is this a game? Yes, and the game that must be played to the finish. Zara, what does this mean? So many illusions shattered, so many dreams trodden in the dust. Well, I'm George now. I don't understand. You and Victor? Shush! Isn't that little Pam crying? She'll cry more, poor mite, when she realises her mother is a... Damn. There's the bell. Clara! I look hideous! Yes, dear. Coming! Clara, before you open the door, we should be eight for dinner. My God. And for breakfast, lunch, tea and dinner tomorrow. You get various rooms ready. Well, I shall have to. I can't sleep in the passage. Now we've upset Clara. It can't be helped. Nothing can be helped. It's fate. Everything that happens is fate. That's always a great comfort to me. More like great selfishness. You mustn't be pert, Clara. Hadn't you better let them all in? Pert I may be, but I have got some thought for others. Eight for dinner. Amy going home early. It's nothing more or less than imposition. Good afternoon. Is Mrs Bliss... Uh... Oh, Sandy, dear. Oh, there you are. Nice manners, I must say. I say, it's perfectly ripping of you to let me come down. Are you alone? Yes. I mean, didn't you meet anyone at the station? I motored down. My car's outside. Would you like me to meet anybody? Oh, no. No. I must introduce you. Uh, oh, this is my daughter, Sorrel, and my son, Simon. How do you do? I'm extremely well, thank you, and I hope you are. So do I. You must forgive me for having rather peculiar children. Have you got a bag or anything? Yes, it's in the car. No, we'd better leave it there for the moment, as Clara has to get the tea. I've been looking forward to this most awfully. It is nice, isn't it? You can see as far as Marlow on a clear day, so they tell me. I mean, I've been looking forward to seeing you. Oh, how perfectly sweet of you. Would you like a drink? No, thanks. I'm in training. Oh, how lovely. What for? I'm boxing again in a couple of weeks. Oh, I must come to your first night. You look simply splendid. Oh, I'm so glad. You know, you mustn't mind if Simon and Sorrel insult you a little. They've been very bad-tempered lately. It's awfully funny you having a grown-up son and daughter at all. I can hardly believe it. I was married very young. I don't wonder. You know, it's frightfully queer the way I've been planning to know you for ages, and I never did until last week. I liked you from the first, really, because you're such a nice shape. Oh, I see. You have small hips and lovely, broad shoulders. Oh, I wish Simon had smaller hips. Do you think you could teach him to box? Rather, if he likes. Well, that's just the trouble. I'm afraid he won't like. He said so dreadfully un that sort of thing. You must use your influence subtly. Oh, I'm sure David would be pleased. Uh, Who is David? My husband. Oh. Why do you say oh like that? Didn't you know I had a husband? I thought he was dead. Oh, no, he's not dead. He's upstairs. You're quite different to what you were the other day. Oh, it's this garden hat. I'll take it off. Oh, there. I've been pruning the calcularias. Oh. I love my garden, you know. It's so peaceful and quaint. I spend long days dreaming away in it. You know how one dreams. Oh, yes. I always long to leave the brittle glamour of cities and theatres and find some rest in some old world nook. That's why we came to Cookham. Awfully nice place, Cookham. Mm. Have you ever seen me on the stage? Rather. Oh, what in? <laughs> that thing where you pretended to cheat at cards to save your husband's good name. Oh, the bold deceiver. That play was never quite right. You were absolutely wonderful. 
That was when I first fell in love with you. Oh, was it really? Yes. You were so frightfully pathetic and brave. Was I? Rather. Well, go on. I feel such a fool telling you what I think, <laughs> as though it mattered. Oh, of course it matters. To me, anyhow. Does it? Honestly? Certainly. Can you punt? Yes, a bit. You must teach Simon. He always gets the pole stuck. I'd rather teach you. Oh, you're so gallant and chivalrous. Much more like an American than an Englishman. I should like to go on saying nice things to you forever. Oh, Sandy. Oh, there now. Is anyone else coming to stay? Anyone else? You don't know. You just don't know. Coming. Coming. You said it would be quiet, with nobody at all. I was wrong. It's going to be very noisy with herds of angry people stamping about. Oh, give me my hat. Judith, my dear, this is divine. Mm. Too, too lovely. Where are the others? What others? Did you come by the 4.30? Yes. Didn't you see anyone at the station? Yes, several people, but I didn't know they were coming here. Well, they are. Sorrel said it was going to be just ourselves this weekend. Sorrel? Yes. Didn't she tell you she'd ask me? Weren't you expecting me? Simon muttered something about your coming, but Sorrel didn't mention it. <laughs> oh, wasn't that odd of her? <laughs> You're a divinely mad family. How do you do? It's useless to wait for introductions with the blisses. My name's Myra Arundel. Sandy Tyrrell, Myra Arundel. Myra Arundel, Sandy Tyrrell, there. Is that your car outside? Yes. Well, Judith, I do think you might have told me someone was motoring down. A nice car would have been so much more comfortable than that beastly train. I never knew you were coming until a little while ago. It's heavenly here, after London. The heat was terrible when I left. You look awfully well, Judith. Rusticating obviously agrees with you. I'm glad you think so. Personally, I feel that a nervous breakdown is imminent. My dear, how ghastly. What's the matter? Nothing's the matter yet, Myra. But I have presentiments. Myra! This is marvellous. Come upstairs, Sandy, and I'll show you your room. Oh, thank you. Um, excuse me. You look beautifully cool. I'm more than cool, really, but it's not climatic coolness. I've been mentally chilled to the marrow by Judith's attitude. Why? What did she say? Well, nothing very much. She was bouncing about on the sofa with a hearty young thing in flannels and seemed to resent my appearance, rather. Oh, you mustn't take any notice of Mother. I'll try not to, but it's difficult. She adores you, really. I'm sure she does. She's annoyed today because Father and Sorrel have been asking people down without telling her. Poor dear, I quite see why. You look enchanting. Thank you, Simon. Are you pleased to see me? Of course, that's why I came. Darling! Shh, don't shout! I feel most colossally temperamental. I should like to kiss you and kiss you and break everything in the house and then jump into the river. Dear Simon. You're everything I want you to be. Absolutely everything. Marvellous clothes, marvellous looks, marvellous brain. Oh, God, it's terrible! I dined with Charlie Templeton last night. Well, you're a devil! You only did it to annoy me. He's far too plump, and he can't do anything but dither about the embassy and badly cut trousers. You loathe him, really. You know you do. You're too intelligent not to. You couldn't like him and me at the same time. It's impossible. Don't be so conceited. Darling, I adore you. That's right. But you're callous. That's what it is. Callous. You don't care a damn. You don't love me a bit, do you? Love is a very big word, Simon. It isn't. It's tiny. What are we to do? What do you mean? We can't go on like this. I'm not going on like anything. Yes, you are. You're going on like Medusa. And there are awful snakes popping their heads out at me from under your hat. I shall be turned to stone in a minute, and then you'll be sorry. <laughs> You're very sweet, and I'm very fond of you. Tell me what you've been doing. Everything. Nothing. What did you do after you dined with Charlie Templeton? Sucked with Charlie Templeton. Well, I don't mind a bit. I hope you ate a lot and enjoyed yourself. There. Generous boy. Come and kiss me. You're only playing up to me now. You don't really want to a bit. I'm aching for it. I love you. Mm. <laughs> This weekend's going to be strenuous. Hell upon earth. Fifteen million people in the house. We'll get up at seven and rush away down the river. Is your father here? Yes, he's working on a new novel. He writes brilliantly. Doesn't he? He drinks too much tea, though. Can't do him much harm, surely. It tans the stomach. Who is Sandy Tyrrell? Never heard of him. He is here with Judith. Oh, that poor thing with hot hands. We'll ignore him. I thought he looked rather nice. You must be mad. He looked disgusting. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Smooth my hair with your soft white hands. Well, it's got glue on it. You smell heavenly. What is it? Borgia of resin. How appropriate. <laughs>
Damn, damn, it's those drearies. Come in, come in. Is this Mrs Bliss's house? Oh, yes, this is it. Is Miss Sorrel Bliss in? I expect so. I'll see if I can find her. Yeah. We'd better go in, don't you think? Yes, I do. Thank you. Oh, hello. Hello. Did you have a nice journey? Yes, thank you. Very nice. I met Miss Corriton at the station. We introduced ourselves while we were waiting for the only taxi to come back. Oh, I took the only taxi? How maddening of me. Mrs. Arundel, how do you do? I never recognised you. <laughs> I did. Why? Have we met anywhere? No. I mean, I recognised you as the one who took the taxi. You are um, Sorrel's brother? Yes, she'll be down in a minute. Come out into the garden, Myra. But, Simon, we can't. Yes, we can. I shall go mad if I stay in the house a moment longer. Tea will be here soon. Well. A strange young man. Very rude, I think. Have you ever met him before? No. I don't know any of them except Mr Bliss. He's a wonderful person. I wonder if he knows you're here. Perhaps the funny woman who opened the door will tell him. Yes. It was fortunate that we met at the station. I'm frightfully glad. I should have been terrified arriving all by myself. I do hope the weather will keep good. Over Sunday. The country round here is delightful. Yes. There's nowhere like England in the spring and summer. No, there isn't, is there? There's a sort of quality you find in no other countries. Have you travelled a lot? Oh, a good deal. How lovely. Spain is very beautiful. Yes, I've always heard Spain was awfully nice. Except for the bullfights. Uh, no one who ever really loved horses could enjoy a bullfight. Nor anyone who loved bulls, either. Exactly. Italy's awfully nice, isn't it? Oh, yes, charming. I've always wanted to go to Italy. Rome is a beautiful city. Yes, I've always heard Rome was lovely. And Naples and Capri. Capri is enchanting. It must be. Have you ever been abroad at all? Oh, yes. I went to Dieppe once. We had a house there for the summer. Dear little place. Dieppe. Yes, it was lovely. Come along, Sandy. Oh, hello. I thought it might be rather lovely on the river before tea. Oh, rather. This way, dear. Well. Russia used to be a wonderful country before the war. It must have been. Was that her? Who? Judith Bliss. Yes, I expect it was. I wish I'd never come. Oh, you mustn't be depressed. I feel horrid. It's always a little embarrassing coming to a strange house for the first time. You'll like Sorrel. She's charming. I wonder where she is. I expect tea will be here soon. Do you think they have tea? Oh, yes, they must. Well, we'd better go on waiting then. Oh, Richard! Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry I didn't know you were here. We've been here a good while. Oh, how awful. Please forgive me. I was upstairs. Well, this is Miss Corriton. Oh. How do you do? Have you come to see Father? Yes. He's in his study. You'd better go up. I don't know the way. Oh, well, I'll take you. Well, come on. Wait a minute, Richard. It's along that passage and the third door on the right. Thank you. The poor girl looks half-witted. Uh, she's shy, I think. I hope father will find her a comfort. Uh, tell me, Sorrel, did your father and mother know I was coming? Oh, yes. They were awfully pleased. A rather nice-looking woman came down in a big hat and went into the garden with a young man. That was mother, I expect. We're an independent family. We entertain our friends sort of separately. Oh, I see. It was sweet of you to come. I wanted to come. I've thought about you a lot. Have you really? Oh, that's thrilling. Yeah, I mean it. You're so alive and vital and different from other people. I'm so frightened that you'll be bored here. Bored? Why should I be? Oh, I don't know. But you won't be, will you? 
Or if you are, tell me at once and we'll do something quite different. You're rather a dear, you know. <gasps> I'm not. I'm devastating. Entirely lacking in restraint. Well, so, Simon, it's father's and mother's fault, really. You see, they're so vague. They've spent their lives cultivating their arts and not devoting any time to ordinary conventions and manners and things. I'm the only one who sees that, so I'm trying to be better. I'd love to be beautifully poised and, and carry off difficult situations with the lift of the eyebrows. I'm sure you could carry off anything. Oh, there you are, you see? Saying the right thing. You always say the right thing and no one knows a bit what you're really thinking. That's what I adore. I'm afraid to say anything now, in case you think I'm only being correct. Oh, but you are correct. I wish you'd teach Simon to be correct too. It would be uphill work, I'm afraid. Why? Don't you like him? I've only met him for a moment. Would, would you like to see the garden? Very much indeed. Oh, no. As a matter of fact, we'd better wait until after tea. Can you play my yong? No, I'm afraid I can't. Oh, I'm so glad. I do hate it so. Oh, here's tea. Where's your mother, dear? Out in the garden, I think. Hmm. Starting to rain. Oh, everyone will come dashing in then. How awful. Do you know where to wash if you want to? Uh, no, but I'm all right. Hello, Sarah. How are you? I'm splendid. Do you know Mr. Gretton? Oh, yes, we've met several times. Come and sit down, Myra. Is tea ready? Yes, just. Simon, come and be nice to Miss Corriton. We've met already. That's no reason for you not to be nice to her. Oh. How do you do? How do you do? Are you staying here? I hope so. You must forgive me for being rather frowsy, but I've been working hard. Father, this is Mr. Gretham. How are you? When did you arrive? This afternoon. Good. Have some tea. Everyone had better put their own sugar and milk in, or we shall get muddled. Where's your mother, Simon? She was last seen in the punt. How extraordinary. She can't punt. Sandy Tyrrell's with her. Oh, well, she'll be all right then. Who is he? I don't know. Hmm. Do sit down, everybody. There's going to be a thunderstorm. I felt sick this morning. This is Sandy Tyrrell. Mother, everybody. I want you to meet Mr. Gretham. Oh, yes. You were here before, weren't you? Before what, darling? Before I went out in the punt. There was somebody else here, too, a fair girl. Me. Oh, there you are. Mm. How do you do? Sit down, Sandy. Eat anything you want. Give Sandy some bread and butter, Simon. Here you are. Thanks. How far are, are you, you from me? We might have had some tea. Too quickly. No, what do we have to do? Choose an adverb and then. Someone goes yes. out, you see, yes. and comes yes. in, and you've chosen a word among yourselves, yes. and then she or he or whoever it is yes. asks you some sort of question, and then you. Not have to... an ordinary question, Simon. They have to ask them to do something in the manner of the word. And then, then you see, you act whatever yes. it is. The answer to the question, you yes. see. And what act. sort of thing is one expected to do? Well, quite usual things like reciting ear for, playing the piano. I can't play the piano. Never mind, you can fake it as yes. long as it conveys an idea of the word. The word we've all thought of. Yes! yes. The word we've chosen when whoever it is is out of the room. I'm afraid I don't quite understand. Oh. Never mind, I'll explain. You see, someone Look, goes I'll out. go out the first time just to Look, show. Look, it's simple. All you have to do is just act in the manner of the word. Well, look here, everybody. I'm going out. All right, go on. The history game's all figured. When two people go out, we come back as Mary Queen of Scots and creeping or somebody. 
I'm no earthly good at this sort of thing. I'll no, show you, Beardy. Look, there's always how women wear. Now, we haven't made that phrase. We will afterwards. We'll do this one first. Go on, Sorrel. Don't be too long. Right. No, no. Bitterly. No, we did that last week. She'll know. Intensely. Oh, it's too difficult. There was an amusing game I played once at the Harrington's oh, house. Mm. Everyone was blind. For this room's not big so enough for so that. Good. What about Winston? I wish I knew what we had to do. You see when we start playing. If we start playing. Mother's brilliant at this. Do you remember when we played it at the Mackenzie's? Yes, and Blanche is so cross when I kiss Freddie's ear in the manner of the worst. Yes. What was the word? <laughs> Oh, I can't remember. Perhaps it's as well. What about dreary? Not definite enough. Winsomely's best. Look, she's sure to get it straight off. Uh, these games are much too brainy for me. Yes, they're not. Young Once Norman Robertson started. used to be marvellous. Do you remember? Yes, wonderful <laughs> sense of humour. He's lasted all anywhere. since his marriage. Oh, I didn't know you knew him. Well, considering he married my cousin... We I don't wondering seem to be getting on with the game. We haven't thought of a word yet. Frankly. Um, too obvious. Very well, don't snap at me. Saucily. I've got a lovely idea for saucily. I should think <laughs> rudely would be the easiest. Don't be sour, Myra. But the great thing is to get an obscure word. What a pity Irene isn't here. She knows masses of obscure yeah, words. Well, she probably picked them up from her obscure friends. It's no use being catty about Irene. She's a perfect darling. I wasn't being catty at all. Yes, you were. Hurry up! Oh, quickly, now we must think. Well, appendicitis. Uh, That's not an adverb. You're thinking of charades. Oh. Charades are damn good fun. Uh, yes, but we don't happen to be doing them at the moment. Sorry. Saucily. No, winsomely's better. Oh, all right, call her in. Sorrel, come on, we're ready. Which is it, saucily or winsomely? Winsomely. <laughs> right. Ah, <laughs> uh, mother. Oh, oh good. Oh. <laughs> Go and take a flower out of that vase and give it to Richard. Oh, yes. very well. <laughs> Oh, which one shall it be? <laughs> <laughs> but of course, this one. <laughs> this is for you, kind sir, she said. Oh, no! Oh, 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 now, <laughs> Myra, oh. get up and say goodbye to everyone in the manner of the word. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. It really has been most delightful. Oh, no, 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 no. Why, what do you mean? You haven't got the right intonation a bit. Oh, Mother, darling, do shut up. Remember what an advantage you have over we poor amateurs, Judith, having been a professional for so long. Oh, I didn't like so long very much. Do you think we oh. might go on now? Go to the next one. I'm not going to do any more. Oh, oh no. Yes. Oh, oh, it doesn't matter. Yes. Richard, oh, yes. light a cigarette in the manner of the word. <laughs> oh, uh, right, um... I forgot what it is. Do you remember? What? Oh, yes. Um. <laughs> ho, 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 my girl. No, 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 no. I don't know what that's meant to be. Well, I was doing my best. Oh, it's so frightfully easy. Nobody can do it right. I believe you've muddled it up. Well, you'd better go on to the next one. Which word were you doing? Oh, I knew it. He was doing the wrong word. Oh, oh give oh. him another chance. No, it's Jackie's turn now. It will oh. come round to him again, I'm afraid. Well, Jackie! I, I didn't know. I was do doing a dance in the manner of the word. Oh, oh. oh no, of oh, course no. you can. Oh, my God, oh, God. Oh, go on. Have a go. Yeah. Have a shot. Oh, no, I must oh, rather not. Jenny, you can't me fuss. Everyone makes It's only a game, after all. Yeah. Yeah. Come along. Oh, try. I couldn't. Oh, please don't ask me to. Oh, it's simply... Oh, leave her alone if she doesn't want to. What's the use of playing at all if people won't do it properly? It's so simple. It's awfully difficult if you haven't done it before. Go on to the next one. Unless everybody's in it, we won't play at all. Now, don't lose your temper. Lose my temper? I like that. No one's giving me the slightest indication of what the word is. You all argue and squabble. Talk, talk, talk! Everybody talks so much! It's surprising to me when people won't play after all. Oh, is that it? game anyhow. I don't want to play it again ever. You haven't oh, played it at all yet. Don't be rude, Sorrel. Really, Simon, the way you go on is infuriating. It's always the same whenever <laughs> Sorrel goes out she gets quarrelsome. Quarrelsome? <laughs> don't worry, Jackie. You needn't do anything you don't want. I think for the future we better confine our efforts to social conversation and not attempt anything in the least intelligence. How can you be so unkind, Mother? Don't speak to me like that. Oh, it's all my fault. I know I'm awfully silly, but it embarrasses me so terribly doing anything in front of people. I should oh, think the you... word was winsomely. Oh, oh, oh I, I must have been listening outside the door, then. Not at all. 
Miss Corriton hey. gave it away. Why, Miss Corriton, all of a sudden? You've been calling her Jackie all the evening. You're far too grand, Sol. And you're absolutely maddening. I'll never play another game with you as long as I live. That won't break my heart. Oh, stop, stop, stop! Come on, Jackie, come out into the garden. I'm sick. I'll oh, sit on my Don't let him take you on the river. He isn't very good at it. Ha, ha, very funny. Sorrel, you're behaving disgracefully. Simon ought to go into the army or something. You both ought to be in reform. Oh, this Chris. always happens. Whenever we play a game, we're a beastly family and I hate Speak us. Speak yourself, dear. I can't without speaking for everyone else, too. We're all exactly the same and I'm ashamed of us. Come into the library, Sandy. Oh, but I... Come um, on! Oh, uh, excuse me. Charming. It's all perfectly charming. I think it would be better, Judith if you exercised a little more influence over the children. Oh, that's right. Blame it all on me. After all, dear, you started it by snapping everybody up. You'd never to a marry me, David. It was a great mistake. Oh, the atmosphere of this house is becoming more unbearable every day. And all because Simon and Sorrel are allowed to do exactly what they like. You sit upstairs all day writing your novels. Novels which earn us our daily bread. Daily bread nonsense. We've got enough money to keep us in comfort until we die. That will be very soon. If we can't get a bit of peace, come out into the garden, Myra. Willingly. I sincerely hope the night air will cool you. I don't know what's happened to you lately, Judith. Nothing's happened to me. Nothing ever does. You're far too smug to alive. Smug? Thank you. Yes, yeah, smug. Smug, smug and pompous. I hope you haven't been drinking, dear. Drinking? Oh, that's very amusing. I think it's rather tragic, your time of life. This way, Mrs. Arundel. <sighs> David's been a good husband to me, but he's wearing a bit thin now. Would you like me to go, to leave you alone for a little? Why, are you afraid I shall become violent? No, I merely thought perhaps I was in the way. Oh, I hope you're not embarrassed. I couldn't bear you to be embarrassed. Not in the least. <sighs> Marriage is a hideous fare altogether, don't you think? I'm really hardly qualified to judge, you see. Oh, do stop being non-committal just for once. It's doubly annoying in the face of us all having lost control so lamentably. I'm sorry. There's nothing to be sorry for, really, because, after all, it's your particular thing, isn't it? Observing everything and not giving yourself away an inch. I suppose it is. You'll get used to us in time, and then you'll feel cosier. <laughs> Why don't you sit down? I'm enjoying myself very much. Mm, it's very sweet of you to say so, but I don't see how you can be. <laughs> oh, but I am. Oh, there now, that was quite a genuine laugh. <laughs> We're getting on. <laughs> Are you in love with sorrow? In love with sorrow? Oh, now I've killed it. I've murdered the little tender feeling of comfort that was stealing over you by sheer tactlessness. Oh, will you teach me to be tactful? Did you really think I was in love with sorrow? Well, it's so difficult to tell, isn't it? I mean, you might not know yourself. She's very attractive. Yes, she is very attractive. It's awfully sad for a woman of my temperament to have a grown-up daughter, you know. I have to put my pride in my pocket and develop in her all the charming little feminine tricks which will eventually cut me out altogether. That wouldn't be possible. I do hope you meant that, because it was a sweet remark. Of course I meant it. You're an extraordinary person. <laughs> In what way, extraordinary? When I first met Sorrel, I guessed what you'd be like. Oh, did you now? <laughs> and am I? Exactly. Oh. Well, I want you to tell me all about yourself and the things you've done. I've done nothing. Oh, what a shame. Why not? I never realise how dead I am until I meet people like you. It's depressing, you know. What nonsense. You're not a bit dead. Do you always live here? I'm going to from now onwards. I intend to sink into a very beautiful old age. When the children marry, I shall wear a cap. <laughs> how absurd. I don't mean a funny cap. You are far too full of vitality to sink into anything. It's entirely spurious vitality. 
If you travel to look below the surface, you'd find a very wistful and weary spirit. I've been battling with life for a long time. But surely such successful battles as yours have been are not wearying. Yes, they are. Frightfully. I've reached an age now when I just want to sit back and let things go on around me. And they do. I should like to know exactly what you're thinking about, really. I was thinking of calling you Richard. It's such a nice, uncompromising name. I should be very flattered if you would. I won't suggest you calling me Judith until you feel really comfortable about me. But I do. Judith. Oh, I'm awfully glad. Richard. Richard, you kissed me. I'm afraid I couldn't help Oh, what are we to do? What are we to do? I don't know. David must be told everything. Everything? Yes, yes. There come moments in life when it is necessary to be honest. Absolutely honest. I've trained myself always to shun the underhand methods other women so often employ. The truth must be faced fair and square. The truth? I don't quite understand. Oh, dear Richard, you want to spare me. I know you're so chivalrous. But it's no use. After all, as I said before, David has been a good husband to me, according to his lights. This may, of course, break him up rather, but it can't be helped. I wonder, oh, I wonder how he'll take it. Well, they say suffering is good for writers. It strengthens their psychology. Oh, my poor, poor David. Oh, never mind. You'd better go out into the garden and wait. Wait? What for? For me, Richard. For me. I will come to you later. Wait in the summer house. I had begun to think that romance was dead, that I should never know it again. Before, of course, I had my work and my life in the theatre, but no, nothing, nothing. Look here, Judith, I apologise for what I did just now. But now you have come and it's all changed. It's magic. I'm under a spell that I never thought to recapture again. Go along. But, Judith... Don't make it any harder for me. I'm quite resolved and it's the only possible way. Go. Go. Sorrel. What am I to say? Well, I don't know, Mother. Neither do I. It was my fault, Mrs. Bliss. Judith. What a fool I've been. What a blind fool. Mother, are you really upset? I'm stunned. Oh, but darling, it's... Don't speak for a minute, Sorrel. We must all be very quiet and think. It was nothing, really, for heaven's sake. Nothing? I open the library door casually, and what do I see? I'm most awfully sorry. It has gone beyond superficial apologies. Mother, be natural for a minute. I don't know what you mean, Sorrel. I'm trying to realise a very bitter truth as calmly as I can. There's nothing so very bitter about it. My poor child. Very well, then. I love Sandy, and he loves me. That is the only possible excuse for your behaviour. Why shouldn't we love each other if we want to? Sandy was in love with me this afternoon. Not real love. You know it wasn't. I know now. I say, look here. I'm most awfully sorry. There's nothing to be sorry for, really. It's my fault for having been so... so ridiculous. Mother! Yes, ridiculous. I'm getting old, old, and the sooner I face it, the better. But, darling... Youth will be served. You're so pretty, Sorrel. Far prettier than I ever was. I'm very glad you're pretty. I feel a fearful cad. Why should you? You've answered the only call that really counts. The call of love and romance and spring. I forgive you, Sandy, completely. There. Well, that's all right, then. I resent your tone, Sorrel. You seem to be taking things too much for granted. Perhaps you don't realise that I am making a great sacrifice. Sorry, darling. 
It's far from easy at my time of life to... Mother! Mother, say you understand and forgive. Understand? You forget, dear. I am a woman. I know you are, Mother. That's what makes it all so poignant. Sandy, if you want sorrow truly, I give her to you unconditionally. Thanks awfully, Mrs. Bliss. You can still call me Judith, can't you? It's not much to ask. Judith. There now. Away with melancholy. This is all tremendously exciting, and we must all be very happy. Oh, don't tell Father, yet. We won't tell anybody. It shall be our little secret. You are splendid, Mother. Nonsense. I just believe in being honest with myself. It's awfully good for one, you know. So cleansing. I'm going upstairs now to have a little aspirin. Yes. It's all right. Oh, don't look so gloomy. I know you don't love me, really. I say so. Oh, don't protest. You know you don't. Any more than I love you. But you told Judith... I was only paying up. One always plays up to Mother in this house. It's a sort of unwritten law. Didn't she mean all she said? <laughs> no, not really. We none of us ever mean anything. She seemed awfully upset. <laughs> it must have been a slight shock for her to discover us clasped tightly in each other's arms. I believe I do love you, Sorrel. Uh, a month ago, I should have let you go on believing that. But now I can't. I'm bent on improving myself. I don't understand. Oh, never mind. It doesn't matter. You just fell a victim to the atmosphere, that's all. There we were, alone in the library, with the windows wide open and probably a nightingale somewhere about. I only heard a cuckoo. Well, even a cuckoo has charm in moderation. You kissed me because you were awfully nice and I was awfully nice and we both liked kissing very much. It was inevitable. Their mother found us and got dramatic. Her sense of the theatre is always fatal. Well, she knows we shan't marry, the same as you and I do. You're under... Absolutely no obligation to me at all. I wish I understood you a bit better. <laughs> Never mind about understanding me. Let's go back into the library. All right. <laughs> no woman under those circumstances would. It's brilliant of you to see that. I do think the whole thing sounds most excellent. Mm, I got badly stuck in the middle of the book when the boy comes down from Oxford. But it worked out all right eventually. When shall I be able to read it? I'll send you the proofs. You can help me correct them. How divine! I shall feel most important. Oh, good. I have a slight confession to make. Confession? Yes. Do you know why I came down here? Huh? Not in the least. I suppose one of us asked you, didn't they? Oh, yes. They asked me. But... Well... I was invited once before, last September. I was in America then. Exactly. How do you mean, exactly? I didn't come. I'm a very determined woman, you know, and I made up my mind to meet you ages ago. Mm, that would charm me of you. I'm not much to meet, really. You see, I'd read Broken Reeds. Did you like it? Like it? I think it's one of the finest novels I've ever read. Then, uh... How did you manage to know so much about women? Uh, I'm afraid my knowledge of them is sadly superficial. Oh, no, you can't call Evelyn's character superficial. It's amazing. Why are you being so nice to me? Have you got a plan about something? <laughs> How suspicious you are. I can't help it. You're very attractive. And I'm always suspicious of attractive people on principle. Not a very good principle. I'll tell you something strictly between ourselves. Do. You're wrong about me. Wrong? In what way? I write very bad novels. Don't be so ridiculous. And you know I do, because you're an intelligent person. I don't know anything of the sort. Tell me why you're being so nice to me. Because I want to be. Why? You're a very clever and amusing man. Splendid. And I think I've rather lost my heart to you. 
Shall we elope? David? There now. You've called me David. Do you mind? Not at all. I'm not sure that you're being very kind. What makes you think that? Oh, being rather the cynical author laughing up his sleeve at a gushing admirer. I think you're a very interesting woman. And extremely nice looking. Do you? Yes. Would you like me to make love to you? Really? I wish you wouldn't say things like that. Uh, I've knocked you off your plate. I'll look away for a minute while you climb onto it again. <laughs> it is wonderful. That's right. Now then. Now then what? You're adorable. You're magnificent. You're tawny. I'm not tawny. Don't argue. This is sheer affectation. Affectation's very nice. No, it isn't. It's odious. You mustn't get cross. I'm not in the least cross. Yes, you are. But you're very alluring. Alluring? Terribly. I can hear your brain clicking. It's very funny. That was rather rude. You've been consistently rude to me for hours. Never mind. Why have you? I'm always rude to people I like. Do you like me? Enormously. How sweet of you. But I don't like your methods. Methods? What methods? You're far too pleasant to occupy yourself with the commonplace. And you spoil yourself by trying to be clever. Thank you. Anyhow, I don't know what you mean by commonplace. You mean you want me to explain? Not at all. Oh, very well. I will. I shan't listen. You'll pretend not to, but you'll hear every word, really. You're so inscrutable and quizzical. Just what a feminine psychologist should be. Yes, aren't I? You frighten me dreadfully. Darling. Don't call me darling. That's unreasonable. You've been trying to make me all the evening. Your conceit is outrageous. It's not conceit at all. You've been firmly buttering me up because you want a nice little intrigue. How dare you? It's true, it's true. If it weren't, you wouldn't be so angry. I think you're insufferable. Myra, dear Myra. Don't touch me. I'm going back into the house. Myra. Go away. Go away. Let's have that nice little intrigue. The only reason that I've been so annoying is that I love to see things as they are first and then pretend they're what they're not. Words. Masses and masses of words. They're great fun to play with. I'm glad you think so. Personally, they bore me stiff. Myra, don't be statuesque. Let go of my hand. You're charming. Let go of my hand. I won't. You will. <laughs> You're <laughs> perfectly, perfectly sweet. David. <laughs> you must say, it's an entrancing amusement. <laughs> Forgive me, Are there any chocolates in the house? No, David. I should like a chocolate more than anything in the world at the moment. This is a very unpleasant situation, David. Horrible. We'd better talk it over. I shall do nothing of the sort. Please, please don't be difficult. I apologise, Judith. Don't apologise, I quite understand. Please let go of my hand, David. I should like to go to bed. I should stay if I were you. It would be more dignified. There isn't any real necessity for a scene. I don't want a scene. I just want to straighten things out. Very well. Go ahead. June has always been an unlucky month for me. Look here, Judith, I'd like to explain why... I thing. don't wish to hear any explanations or excuses. They're so cheapening. This is bound to happen sooner or later. It always does, to everybody. The only thing is to keep calm. I am, perfectly. There is such a thing as being too calm. Sorry, dear. Life has dealt me another blow, but I don't mind. What did you say? I said life had dealt me another blow, but I didn't mind. Rubbish. You're probably irritable, dear, because you're in the wrong. It's quite usual. Now, Judith. Shh, shh. Let me speak. It is my right. I don't see why. I am the injured party, am I not? Injured? He's extremely injured. Injured? Your attitude, David, is nothing short of deplorable. It's all nonsense. Sheer, unbridled nonsense. No, David, you can't evade the real issues as calmly as that. I've known for a long time, I've realised subconsciously for years, that you've stopped caring for me in that way. What do you mean, that way? Just that way. It's rather tragic, but quite inevitable. I'm growing old now. Men don't grow old like women, as you'll find to your cost, Myra, in a year or two. David has retained his youth astonishingly, perhaps because he has had fewer responsibilities and cares than I. This is all ridiculous hysteria. No, Myra. Judith is right. What are we to do? Do? Nothing. You love her truly, David. Madly. David! You thought just now that I was joking. Couldn't you see that all my flippancy was only a mask, hiding my real emotions, crushing them down desperately? But David, I knew it. The time has come for the dividing of the ways. What on earth do you mean? 
I mean that I'm not the sort of woman to hold a man against his will. You're both making a mountain out of a molehill. David doesn't really love me, Madeline. I don't love him. It's... You do love him. I can see it in your eyes, in your every gesture. David, I give you to her freely and without rancor. We must all be good friends always. Judith, do you mean this? You know I do. How can we ever repay you? Just by being happy. I may leave this house later on. I have a feeling that its associations may become painful, especially in the autumn. Look here, Judith. October I... is such a mournful month in England. I think I shall probably go abroad, perhaps a pension somewhere in Italy with cypresses in the garden. I've always loved cypresses. They are such sad, weary trees. What about the children? We must share them, dear. I'll pay you exactly half the royalties I receive from everything, Judith. That's very generous of you. You have behaved magnificently. This is a crisis in our lives, and thanks to you... Judith, I will speak! Shh, Myra, darling. We owe it to Judith to keep control of our emotions. A scene will be agonising for her now. She has been brave and absolutely splendid throughout. Let's not make things harder for her than we can help. Come. We'll go out into the garden. I will not go out into the garden. Please go. I don't think I can bear any more just now. So this is the end, Judith? Yes, my dear. The end. Mother! Mother! I've got something important to tell you. Very well, dear. Where's Sorrel? In the library, I'm afraid. Sorrel! Come out! I've got something vital to tell you. You seem excited, my boy. What has happened? Come on, Sandy. What's the matter, Simon? I wish you wouldn't all look so depressed. It's good news. Good news? I thought perhaps Jackie had drowned. No, Jackie hadn't been drowned. She's been something else. Simon, what do you mean? Jackie! Jackie! She has become engaged to me. Haven't you, Jackie? Uh, Simon! Good heavens! Simon, my dear. Oh, this is too much. What on earth are you crying about, Mother? Oh, my chick's leaving the nest. Now I shall only have my memories left. Oh, Jackie, come and kiss me. Congratulations, Simon. Oh, you must promise to make my son happy. But Mrs. Bleak... Shush, 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 I understand. I've not been a mother for nothing. But it's not true. You're trying to spare my feelings, I know. Well, I'm not going to spare your feelings or anyone else's. You're the most infuriating set of hypocrites I've ever seen. This house is a complete feather bed of false emotions. You're posing self-centered egotists, and I'm sick to death of you. Myra! Don't speak to me! I've been working up for this. Only every time I open my mouth, I've been mowed down by theatrical effects. You haven't got one sincere or genuine feeling among the lot of you. You're artificial to the bunch of lunacy. It's a great pity you ever left the stage, Judith. It's your rightful home. You can rant and roar there as oh, much as ever you like. Rant and roar. And let me tell you this. I'm God not going to allow you to say another word oh, to Mother. This is you a look here, Mother. Why are you behaving like this? Hello there. What's happened? Is this a game? Yes. And a game that must be played to the finish. Zara, what does this mean? So many illusions shattered. So many dreams trodden in the dust. Love's whirlwind. <laughs> Dear old love's whirlwind. I don't understand. You and Victor? My God. Hush. Isn't that little Pam crying? She'll cry more, poor mate, when she realises her mother oh, is a... don't say it, don't say it. Spare her that. I've given you all that makes life worth living, my youth, my womanhood, and now my child. Would you tear the very heart out of me? I tell you, it's infamous that men like you should be allowed to pollute society. You have ruined my life. I have nothing left, nothing. Gone in heaven, where am I to turn for help? Is this true? Answer me. Is this true? Yes, yes. You can't. Don't strike. He is your father. Oh. Has she painted? <laughs>
What's the matter? <sighs> Nothing. I suppose we help ourselves to breakfast. <sighs> oh, I say, don't cry. I'm not crying. You were. I heard you. It's this house. It's on my nerves. I don't wonder, after last night. Have you had any breakfast? Yes, thank you. I wish I'd never come. I had horrible nightmares with all those fearful dragons crawling across the walls. Dragons? Yes. I'm in a Japanese room. Everything in it's Japanese. Even the bed. How awful. I believe they're all mad, you know. The blisses? Yes, they must be. I've been thinking that too. Do you suppose they know they're mad? No, people never do. It was Mr. Bliss asked me down. He hasn't paid any attention to me at all. I went into his study soon after I arrived yesterday and he said, Who the hell are you? Didn't he remember? He did afterwards. And then he brought me down to tea and left me. Are you really engaged to Simon? Oh, no. Oh, I have not. You were last night. But so were you, to sorrow. Not properly. We talked it over. I don't know what happened to me. I was in the garden with Simon, and he was being awfully sweet, and then he suddenly kissed me and rushed into the house and said we were engaged. And that hateful Judith asked me to make him happy. That's exactly what happened to me and Sorrel. Judith gave us to one another before we knew where we were. How frightful. I like Sorrel, though. She was jolly decent about it afterwards. I think she's a cat. Why? Look at the way she lost her temper over that beastly game. All the same, she's better than the others. That wouldn't be difficult. <laughs> oh, I say, I've got hiccups. Hold your breath. It was because I <laughs> bolted my breakfast. Hold it as long as you can. One, two, three. <coughs> oh, I can't any more. <laughs> Eat a lump of sugar. I'm awfully sorry. No, I don't mind. But it's a horrid feeling, isn't it? Horrid? <laughs> People have died from hiccups, you know. Have they? Yes. An aunt of mine once had them for three days without stopping. How beastly. <laughs> She had to have the doctor and everything. I expect mine will stop soon. I hope they will. Oh, damn. Drink some water the wrong way round. How do you mean, the wrong way round? The wrong side of the glass, I'll show you. Oh, there isn't any water. Perhaps coffee would do as well. I've never tried coffee, but it might. There you are. Uh, what do I do? Tip it up and drink from the opposite side, so sort of... Upside down. Uh, I can't oh. reach any. Oh, look out. Somebody's coming. Bring it into the library, quick. Oh, I'll bring the sugar. Oh. I oh. might need it again. Oh, God. Anyone around? Filthy this the day. Good morning. Uh, oh, good morning. Are we the first down? No, I don't think so. Isn't this rain miserable? Appalling. Are you having eggs and bacon or haddock? Uh, haddock. I'll have haddock too. I simply couldn't strike out a line for myself this morning. Have you seen anybody? Uh, no. Good. We might have a little peace. Have you ever stayed here before? No, and I never will again. I feel far from well this morning. I'm so sorry, but not entirely surprised. You see, I had the boiler room. How terrible. The window stuck, and I couldn't open it. I was nearly suffocated. The pipes made peculiar noises all night as well. Oh, there isn't any sugar. Oh. We'd better ring. I doubt it'll be the slightest use, but we'll try. Do the whole family have breakfast in bed? I neither know nor care. <laughs> They're strange people, aren't they? Oh, strange is putting it mildly. Yes, what's the matter? There isn't any sugar. Yes, there is. I put it there myself. Well, perhaps you'd find it for us, then. That's very funny. I could have sworn on my Bible oath I brought it in. Well, it obviously isn't here now. Someone's taken it. That's what it is. That seems a queer thing to do. Do you think you could get us some more? Oh, yes. Mm. I'll fetch you some. But you mark my words. There's been some hanky-panky somewhere. 
Clara is really more at home in a dressing room than a house. Uh, was she Judy's dresser? Of course. What other excuse could there possibly be for her? She seems good-natured, but quaint. Oh, this hutter is disgusting. Yeah, it isn't very nice, is it? Here you are, dear. Thank you. It's a shame the weather's changed. You might have had such fun on the river. Mm. <laughs> What's that? Yes, a good deal. Oh, dear. All over the carpet. It was my fault. I'm most awfully sorry. How did you come to do it? Well, you see, he had the hiccups, and I'm showing him how to drink upside down. How ridiculous. Well, thank heaven it wasn't one of the Crown Derbies. They've gone now, anyhow. It was the sudden shock, I expect. I say, it's raining. It's been raining for hours. Mrs Arundel. Yes? What are you going to do about, um... About today? Nothing. Except go up to London by the first train possible. Do you mind if I come too? I don't think I could face another day like yesterday. Neither could I. Let's all go away, quietly. Won't it seem a little rude if we all go? Yes, it will. You and Miss Carton must stay. Well, I don't see why. I don't think they'd mind very much. Yes, they would. You must let Mr. Gretham and me go away first, anyhow. Ring for Clara. I want to find out about the trains. I hope they won't all come down now. You needn't worry about that. They're sure to roll about in bed for hours. They're such a slovenly family. Have you much packing to do? No. I did most of it before I came down. What is it now? Can you tell me what trains there are up to London? When? This morning. Why? You're not leaving, are you? Yes. Mr. Gretham and I have to be up by lunchtime. Well, you miss the 10.15. Obviously. There isn't another till 12.30. Good heavens. And that's a slow one. Look here, Jackie. I'll take you up in my car as soon as you like. All right. Lovely. Oh, you've got a car, haven't you? Yes. Will it hold all of us? You said it would be rude for all of us to go. Well, hadn't you and Mr. Gretham better wait for the train? Certainly not. If there is room, we should be very, very grateful. I think I can squeeze you in. Then that's settled. When shall we start? As soon as you're ready. <coughs> <coughs> uh, Mrs. Arundel, what are you going to do about tipping Clara? I don't know. What do you think? I've hardly seen her since I've been here. Isn't there a housemaid or anything? No, I don't think so. Is ten bob enough? Kitch. Too much. We'd better give her one pound ten between us. Very well, then. Will you do it and we'll settle up in the car? Uh, must I? Yes. Uh, you'd do it much better. Oh, uh, no, I shouldn't. Come on, we'll finish packing. All right. Uh, here, don't leave me. I'll just go and look at the car. We'll all be ready in ten minutes. Yes, ten minutes. Yes, ten minutes. Right up. Hello. Where's everybody gone? Uh, they've gone to get ready. We're leaving in Mr. Tyrrell's car. Bit sudden, isn't it? Uh, this is from all of us, Clara. Oh. Thank you very much for all your trouble. Oh, aren't you a dear now? There wasn't any trouble. Oh, there must have been a lot of extra work. One gets used to that here. Good morning, Clara. Good morning. I hope you've been comfortable. Comfort? Oh, yes. Moisa, have the papers come? Yes. Here you are, dear. Thank you. You've forgotten my orange juice? No, I haven't, dear. It's just outside. Oh, listen to this. We saw Judith Bliss in a box at the Haymarket on Tuesday, looking as lovely as ever. There, now. I thought I looked hideous on Tuesday. Oh, you looked sweet. Here you are, dear. Did you see that nice bit in the referee? No, the Times. The referee's much better. I saw gay and colourful Judith Bliss at the Waifs and Strays matinee last week. She was talking vivaciously to producer Basil Dean. Is sooth, said I, where ignorance is bliss, tis folly to be wise. Oh, dear referee, it's so <laughs> unselfconscious. If you want any more coffee, just ring for it. Oh, I wish I was sitting on a lovely South Sea island with masses of palm trees and coconuts and turtles. And... Mm, would be divine, wouldn't it? Mm. I wonder where everybody is. 
I wonder. Good morning, Mother. Oh, Simon, darling. <laughs> Mary Sanders has had another failure. Oh, dear. Oh, she must be used to it by now. It's finished. What, dear? The sinful woman. Oh, how splendid. Read it to us now. I've got the last chapter here. Go on, then. Oh. Hello. Good morning. I seem to know that boy's face. Listen, do you remember that bit when Violet was taken ill in Paris? Yes, dear. Well, I'll go on from there. I do, dear. Paris in spring, with the Champs-Élysées alive and dancing in the sunlight, likely dressed children like gay painted Mom butterflies. Marmalade, Simon. The Here you are, streets... Mother. Sorry, Father. Gay painted butterflies... The streets were thronged with hurrying vehicles. The thin peak peak of taxi. Oh, I love peak peak. Seemed to merge in with the other vivid noises, weaving a vast <clears throat> pattern of sound, which was Paris. What was Wait, Paris, dear? Which was Paris? What was Paris? You can't say a vast pattern of sound. What was Paris? Yes, but what was Paris? A vast pattern of sound, which was Paris. Oh, I see. <clears throat> Jane Sefton, in her scarlet hispano, swept out of the Rue Saint-Honoré into the Place de la Concorde. She couldn't have. Why? The Rue Saint-Honoré doesn't lead into the Place de la Concorde. Yes, it does. You're thinking of the Rue Boissy d'Anglais, Father. I'm not thinking of anything of the sort. Then, don't be obstinate. Do you think I don't know Paris as well as you do? Oh, never mind. Father's probably right. He isn't right. He's wrong. Go on with your food, son. Don't be testy, David. It's a sign of age. Jane Sefton in her scarlet espano swept out of the Rue Saint-Honoré into the Place de la Concorde. That's absolutely ridiculous. Why don't you alter it? It isn't ridiculous. It's perfectly right. Very well, then. Get a map and I'll show you. We haven't got a map. Now, look here, Judith. Here's the Rue Royale. Here's the Crillon Hotel. And here's the Rue Saint-Honoré. It it's the Wassy d'Anglais. That runs parallel with the Rue de Rivoli. muddled. I have not got it all muddled. Don't shout, you have. Oh, why not let Father get on with it? It's silly to get cross at criticism. It indicates a small mind. Small mind, my foot. Oh, that was very rude. I shall go to my room in a minute. I wish you would. David. Look here, Father. Mother's right. Here's the Place de la Concorde. Oh, shut up, Sorrel. Shut up yourself, you pompous little beast. You think you know such a lot about everything. Thing and you're as ignorant as a frog. Why a frog? I give you my solemn promise, David, that you're wrong. I don't want your solemn promise because I know I'm right. It's no use arguing with father, mother. Why isn't it any use arguing with father? Because you're both so pig-headed. Are you content to sit here, Judith, and let your son insult me? Well, he's your son as well as mine. I begin to doubt it. Oh, David! Father, how can you? I'll never father. attempt to read oh, any of you right. anything again there, as there, long as I live. Oh, oh, You're not a bit mother. interested in my work, and you oh, don't give a damn there. whether I'm a success or a failure. You're dead certain to be a failure if you cram your books with inaccuracy. I am not in Yes, you are. And you're foul-tempered and soiled. Foiled? I like that. Nobody here spoils me. You're the most insufferable family to live with. Well, why in heaven's name don't you go and live somewhere else? There's gratitude. Are you ready, Mrs. Arundel? Ready. Come along, Richard. Come on, Jackie. Are you sure we shouldn't just say goodbye? Positive. Come on, quietly, down the stairs. If we keep quiet, they'll never notice. Mother, do sit down and be quiet. How dare you speak to Mother like that? Open the door, please, Miss Corrigan. Hmm? Right, come on now, quietly. Richard, get all the pieces in the boot. I'll start the engine. I'll never realize how small you are, David. You're tiny. There now. They've all gone. How very rude. People really do behave in the most extraordinary manner these days. Come back and finish your breakfast, Sorrel. All right. Go on, David, darling. I'm dying to hear the end. Jane Sefton in her scarlet hispano swept out of the Rue Saint-Honoré into the Place de la Concorde. Hay Fever was written by Noel Coward and starred Judy Dench as Judith Bliss, with Michael Williams as David, Geoffrey Palmer as Richard, Celia Imrie as Myra, Patricia Brake as Jackie, 
Christopher Blake as Sandy, Patrick Pearson as Simon, Alison Reed as Sorrel, and Patricia Hayes as Clara. The director was Leslie Lawton.